I can already feel the presence of the Lord. He's here. He's wanting to bless. Let's all stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just want to take this opportunity. God, we just want to stand and worship your holy name. And God, we just want to thank you for all the blessings that we have in our life. And God, we just thank you for this day and this mighty work that you've done in our life. And God, we thank you for the peace and the joy that each and every one of us has in this building. And God, we just ask to God that you continue to work on us in this church service and in our lives. And God, we just careful tonight, God, just to step before you, and God, just to offer ourselves down at this altar tonight as a sacrifice unto you, and God, if there be anything in our life tonight, God, we just ask, God, that you just work it out, and God, we just ask that you can continue to work on us each and every day, one step at a time, God, we just want to move closer to you, and God, we just all about worship in our life. God, as we worship you in this service, God, we know that we're just going to draw closer to you. God, we know that one day we're going to be able to see you in heaven and walk up to you and just tell you, God, we just love you. And God, we thank you for what you've done for us. Let's give a Lord a clap offering tonight before we sing. standing. Let's grab a hymnal and turn to page 253 and sing that song, The Glory Land Way. Page 253. Saying, God, here am I. 
God, just willing to do your will. God, just willing to serve you. God, we just take this time tonight just to praise and to worship your holy name, God. And God, we just looking forward to the move of God in this service. And God, once again, we just ask, God, step out of heaven with the power of the Holy Ghost. And God, just burn up every trace of sin. God, just get us out of the way. And God, just move into our hearts. God, we just want to take this time and to thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. You may be seated. That's really what worship is about. It's just moving ourselves out of the way and just letting Jesus come in and letting the Holy Ghost come in. Amen. Amen. We were driving down the road today and we were we were thinking about various things. I can remember when we first became a Christian and we got the Holy Ghost and we would come to church and I remember walking up to the church door and reaching out my hand, getting ready to grab a hold of the door and I could feel the Holy Ghost. I could feel it tingling on the back of my neck. And that's what we're talking about tonight in service, being right with God, feeling the presence of God. And what did you come here for tonight? We came here to get something from God. God wants to bless and move in our life. He's just waiting on us. Amen. And we were also thinking about, we like illustrations, and that's how my mind works. What we were also thinking about is we were going down the road about an old steam engine. You remember them watching them old World War II movies and those old westerns, and they had the old steam engines in them? Yeah. And what they had to do is they had to use fire, or they had to use fuel oil, or they had to use coal. Yeah. But the hotter they got that steam engine, the more steam they could apply to it, and the faster it would go. And that's what we need. We need God, and we need Jesus. We need the Holy Ghost in our life. And he's here in this service just to stoke that fire. What did you come here for? He wants to stoke that fire in our life tonight. Add more fuel to it. Add more fuel to it. Let Jesus bless. Let the Holy Ghost bless. Let God bless in our life. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's recharged Thursday night. You can come to this old fashioned altar and listen to the word of God tonight and be blessed. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. Aren't you excited? Amen. It's a blessing to be a Christian yeah. because we're going to be able to see Jesus. Christ makes all the difference in our lives. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about being a mechanic, and I said everything, pretty much everything about being a mechanic is all man-made, so you know it's going to be messed up. So sometimes when you go into it, really a lot of times when you go into it, you expect the worst. And if it gets better, God's the one that makes the increase. God's the one that makes things better. Amen? Amen. That's right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Christ is here. Pastor's got something for us. It's going to be awesome. Just get fired up for it. But remind, be remindful, we have things scheduled for tomorrow night. I know that we have an in-home Bible study for tomorrow night. I know that we have prayer meeting here on Saturday at noon. going to yeah. be a good time. It's, again, it's all about that worship, yeah. just worshiping God and letting him just chisel down that self. Mm -hmm. And when he chisels down that self, and then when the melting pot is up and when your fire is stoked, What's on the inside? It's that pure gold that Jesus yeah. is trying to get you to, that Jesus is trying to mold your heart to. Right. And we'll be praying here on Saturday, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, and Sunday night yeah. at 6.30. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. And Bible study at 6.30, we're diving deep. I don't know, Pastor, are you going to be preaching about Peter again on this Tuesday, or are we going back to Hebrews? Not yeah. sure. We don't know yet. That's up to the Holy Ghost. That's up to God, whatever he wants. The last couple of Bible studies, we've been in the book of Peter. It's been good. I'm telling you, talking about patience, talking about temperance. And when you're sitting out there in the pew and pastor's talking and the Holy Ghost is working, ooh, ooh, but it's all good stuff. God's just trying to chisel us to exactly to the person that we want to need, want to be. It didn't take Arnold Schwarzenegger one day to get where he had to be, but it took years of practice. Yeah. And God is still working on each one of us. Yeah, right. I heard a long time ago about this people that used to wear a shirt that said, be patient with me. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> God's still working on each and every one of us. I'm telling you what, that's a blessing. God doesn't have no throwaways. That's right. We're all working for the same goal. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, yes, At this time, a brother would come. We're going to receive the... Thursday evening tithe and offering. Wow. And remember, all Christians pay tithe and give offerings unto the Lord. Brother, you please pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the blessings that you give us. Yeah. We're thankful for this time to give back to you. We ask that you guys bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
to sing a special. Amen. Hallelujah. to listen I don't want to see anymore give me a vision that you could move this heart to be set apart I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror and I don't want to trade your plan for something familiar I can't waste a day, I can't stay the same, I want to be different, I want to be changed, till all of me is gone, and all that remains is a fire so bright, the whole world will see that there's something so come and be different in me. I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to stay in this world and lose what matters. And so I'm giving up everything because I want to be be changed till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright the whole world will see that there's something different so come and be different oh I know that I am far from perfect yes but through So take this beating in my heart and uh, come and finish what you started. When they see me, let them see you. Cause I wanna be different. Yeah, I wanna be different. I wanna be changed. Till all of me is gone and all there remains. Oh, is a fire so bright The whole world can see That there's something different So come and be different Oh, I know that I am far from perfect That's right But through you the cross still says I'm worth it So take this beating in my heart and I Come and finish what you started Oh, when you see me, let them see you Cause I wanna be different Yeah, I wanna be different I wanna be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Oh, is a fire so bright The whole Come and be different. I just wanna be different, so you could be different in me. Make us different tonight, Jesus. We pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we just Hallelujah. want to be different in this service. God, continue to. On us, God, we come before you as a humble servant, and God, we just ask that you would help us to change your hearts, to be different, to be molded in your image. Amen. Amen. At this time, pastor's going to come and minister the word of God. God bless you, sir. Praise God. Amen. I mean, it's exciting to be here yes. tonight. Amen. And brother saying this is a recharge Thursday. When he said that, I thought about TNT. 
you know, if you know anything about TNT, you, watch, you ever watch the road running and uh, uh, how they throw all that TNT on there. You know, God is here tonight. Yes, sir. The Spirit of God is here. I'm thankful tonight that he conquers all. He has conquered all. We serve a savior that has conquered death. Hello? Yes, sir. Not only conquered death, but he's conquered all, all everything that you're going through tonight. Yeah. So if you came here with some problems, came here with things that you said, well, I don't know if uh, I can uh, 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 handle it, preacher. You can't, but Jesus can. Amen. Jesus can. Put it in the hands of the man that's still at right. the waters. That's right. Amen? Right. Man, I'm thankful tonight that we serve a God that's well able to keep us. Yes, sir. I was listening to a preacher preach. Matter of fact, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was preaching, I, I was saying, saying, thankful that we serve a God that is well able to keep us. And I kept saying that, and I was like, man, it must be instilled in me that, um, that I believe that, that our God is well able to keep us. You know, thinking back all the years that um, I've been serving the Lord. He's never left me, never forsaken me. He's never pushed me on the side of the road and said, hey, uh, fiend for yourself. No, he is always there um, with us, um, for us, and um, continue to keep, keep us going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know, I'm thankful for that. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 3. Acts, chapter 3, reading three verses of scripture there. Acts chapter 3, beginning to read verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. You say, why you should say that, preacher? Because sometimes, you know, you just read the Bible and don't, certain, certain words just stick out. You know, it didn't say they just laid my two hands. They laid him at the gate daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask an alms and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. And he took him by the right hand. Yes, sir. Amen. So how come he didn't take him by the left hand? And lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Tonight, with the help of the Holy Ghost, we'd like to preach on a thought, a message titled, Jesus is all you need. Yes, sir. Jesus is all you need. Yes, but Najim, could you please pray over the message, the message tonight, please? Amen. Jesus is all you need. In the early church, devout Jews, they observed corporate prayer. Or they began to get together for prayer three times a day. I'm out, preacher. <laughs> they had a prayer service. Not a worship service. Not a fellowship service meeting or service, not a Bible study, not a church service. They got 
Oh, they all got together three times a day just to pray. Now, in today's church, we will be hard-pressed to find a church that has prayer service or prayer meeting uh, once a day, every day. I want to throw in here. I want to throw this in there. Do you have a regular routine of prayer in your life? Man, preacher, you just get right on in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Is there a place that you go? A special time of the day, every day, where you spend time with the preacher. I don't even want to hear that. I ain't got time to do that. I don't have time to spend. I, don't you know I work 8 to 12 hours a day? Anyway, just leave that one alone. I remember a story about a small town that had been dry or uh, without alcohol in that town. Um, uh, didn't have any alcohol in that town. But then a local businessman decided that he will build a tavern. A group of Christians from a local church, they were concerned, and they planned an all-night prayer meeting to ask God to intervene. Now, it just so happened that shortly thereafter they started that prayer meeting, that lightning struck the bar, and it burned it to the ground. The owner of the bar sued the church, claiming that the prayers of the congregation were responsible for the fire. But the church, they hired a lawyer. They hired a lawyer to argue in court that they were not responsible. The judge said that no matter how this case comes out, one thing is clear. The tavern owner believes in prayer and the Christians don't. <laughs> now Luke tells us here in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. He doesn't write one day Peter and John went out um, uh, so they could do some miracles. No. He didn't um, even say when Peter and John woke up that morning that they knew that that day would be different. But they said that. From all evidence, we see that this is just an ordinary day. But today, or tonight, we are going to see how God can work in an extraordinary way on an ordinary day with some ordinary people. And as we take this walk together tonight, I want us to see a few things that I believe that the Lord wants us to see in this picture or in this story tonight. The first one is never give up hope. Hello? Yes, right. yes. You need to know that there is no situation that is beyond the scope of God's ability. Yes. Okay? No matter how long you've been in your situation, I want you to know that God can deliver. Yes, sir. Amen. Hello? Yes. Oh, no, we ain't here tonight. <laughs> I want you to know that God can bring you through. Yes, that he can lift you up. Yes. He can save your soul regardless of what sins you've been committing or how long you've been in them. Yes. He can heal you from any sickness or disease regardless of how long you've been in that condition. Yes, sir. The text tells us that this man was crippled from his mother's womb. As long as he's been alive. He was unable to take care of himself. To get from one place to another, somebody or someone had to carry this man. The text also tells us that he was carried every day to the temple gate daily. That's why I throw that out there. Daily. The Bible says daily. He was carried every day to the temple gate called beautiful just to beg from the people going into the temple. He's been in that condition so long that he probably thought that, that that was the way it was going to be for the rest of his life. Yeah. You know how it is. Yes, oh, nothing's going to change. This is God is going to be. Yeah, yes, it is what it is. I hate that phrase. <laughs> and not only the beggar, no doubt his friends and his family that carried him to that gate every day uh, must have thought the same thing. And that was also part of their regular routine. Yes. But God. <laughs> yes. 
but God. Peter and John was going in the temple that day, and this man asked uh, uh, them for some money. He, Peter said, look on us. I believe he thought he was going to get a whole lot of money. Otherwise, why did he make a big deal about saying, look on us? Just chop the money in my hand, man, and go on in the temple like everybody else. Why well, I got to look on you? I believe that that man was probably thinking that as mine. Do you need me to see you? <laughs> Just give me the money and keep, and keep trucking. But Peter said, silver and gold, I ain't got. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on this man's face? You know how it is. Somebody's asking for some money. Oh, oh, look on me, man. Hold up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on this man's face when he finds out that Peter has no greenbacks in his pocket? But Peter goes on to say, but what I have give I, I don't, what I have such as I have give I to thee. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Get up and walk. Yeah. Then Peter reaches out. The Bible says, uh, and I don't know why the Bible says the right hand. Maybe the right hand was stronger. He said Peter stretched out his right hand. Uh, and he takes this man by uh, the hand and he begins to help him up. Uh, sometimes you have to do more than just pray for somebody. Yes. Are you here? Yes. Sometimes you got to do more than just pray for somebody. Sometimes you got to get physically involved. You can pray that God feed the hungry, but it's even better to let God use you to feed the hungry. Yes, sir. You can pray for the naked, but it's better to give the naked some of those clothes that you have in your closet that you would never be able to wear again. You say, well, preacher, I'm holding up um, to those clothes till I get back to size six. <laughs> Peter helped this man up. Man that was looking for a handout Got a hand up. That's right. He didn't get any silver and gold, but he received some strength in his feet and his ankle bones. He was looking to just maintain his present level of existence. But God was kicking him up a notch. Right. Okay? Yes, he went from sitting and running to leaping. He went from begging to praising God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your blessing ain't always going to be financial. Hello. Amen. Oh, preacher, I've been praying. God oh, bless me. Fine. Your blessing ain't always going to be financial. Okay. Hello. Can I get a big amen? amen. I'm gone, preacher. I ain't going. I don't, hey, don't want to talk about that. Sometimes your blessing might, might be to just to have some peace in your life. Amen. Okay. A peace that's beyond all understanding. Your blessing might be having strength in the time of weakness. It may be to have joy in spite of your circumstances. Joy that the world did not give you and the world can't take it away. It might be going to being able to get some sleep at night. Okay, no amount of money is worth not being able to sleep. Money, I'm going to say it now. Money is not everything. Somebody probably said, it's everything. Money's not everything, but it's all everything that I need. No, money's not everything. If it was, why are so many unhappy rich people out there? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Peter and John didn't have any money that day, at that day. But they had more. They had power. They had power to use the name of Jesus. They had the power to act in the name of Jesus. Now the words in the name of Jesus are they're not some um, incantation or some magic phrase that you begin to use like abracadabra. Okay? When you begin to say, uh, in the name of Jesus, ain't no, uh, uh, no doors are going to open or whatever it's not. Abracadabra. It ain't working. These words are not something to be said when you want to get God to do what you want to do in your life. Okay? These words express a confidence in the presence and authority of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's doing things that are consistent with the will of God. It's doing things that Jesus would do if we were or if he were physically present with us. Did you know Jesus is here tonight? So if you look around, you say, well, I don't see any Jesus. He's here. 
He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, he's there among them in the midst of them. So what is he doing? He's speaking to the hearts and in the lives of individuals by the Holy Spirit. If you can see Jesus physically tonight, I would begin to believe that Jesus is going from pew to pew by his spirit, whispering in people's ears. Hey, Brother Canaan, God can I, I supply all your need according to your riches and glory. Sister Tiffany, all things are possible to them that believe. Brother Josh goes all the way down. You know, the devil's always, he's here too. You don't want to believe just said. Ready. Peter didn't just say get up and walk. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter by himself had no power. Okay. Yeah. Jesus said without me you can do nothing. Okay. It's not just you. It's Christ in you and through you. Okay. We cannot get through the day without Jesus Christ. Yeah. We think we can do it in our own ability and whatever. We just get frustrated and say, forget it. Forget it. I'm not, I just can't do this. But it takes Jesus to strengthen us. He strengthened these mortal bodies so we can take care of even our children. Hello. <laughs> Peter and John had confidence. Well, had confidence in a risen Lord. This man got more than what he was looking for that day. He didn't get any money. But he got healed and he was made whole. For 40 years, he was considered an outcast. Not allowed in the temple just because of his existence or his condition. He was poor. He was lame. These conditions qualified him in that day to be an outcast. Because of their spiritual pride, the Jews felt that he was blemished, not fit for the house of the Lord. The good news is that he may, he, he may have been an outcast to those Jews, but he was not an outcast to God. And God is a friend to the poor, the lame, the blind, the sick. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to heal the sick and preach the gospel and the good news to the poor. This man could not go in the temple to join in prayer because he was crippled. But now he's an insider. You ever heard of insider, inside trading? He's an insider now. You ever heard somebody say, uh, you got a man that works on the inside? I work for a company, and some, some of the brethren always said, hey, sir, could you get this? Could you get that? I said, you got a man that works on the inside. Now, I ain't talking about stealing, okay? <laughs> now he's an insider. Before I can imagine them thinking it would be nice to go and pray with the other people that were in the temple. He not only could go in the temple now, he went in there walking and leaping and praising God. He's made so much noise that he got the attention of everyone that's in that prayer meeting. They wanted to see what was going on. They wanted, to close, they wanted a close-up view uh, of the man that was crippled, uh, that once was crippled, uh, and now is interrupting interrupting the prayer meeting, yes. uh, our prayer meeting. Yes. Who is this individual? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know how it is. You know, you're praying, where everybody head down, where there's there. somebody open the door. Oh, God, hallelujah! <laughs> you know what happens when a preacher sees a crowd? He starts preaching Jesus. The way this text is written, to get, I get the idea that God used this miracle to prepare the soil for preaching. People listen to you when they see something happen that they, they think that was a miracle. They had seen this beggar sitting at the gate for years, daily. I want to throw that out there. Every single day, daily. And your Bible, the Bible, when it, when it puts words in there, you got to make sure you, you see those words. Yes. Yes. You know, it's just like, oh, he was just there was just once a day. Just that time that they was going, no, daily. Yes, sir. So, that, matter of fact, that just kicks it in another gear right there. You've been serving God for years. Maybe a few months, maybe a year. It seems like nothing is, it's nothing's happening. Still the same. Are you serving him daily? 
Are you waiting for something to happen? Hello? Well, do I got to be in church for something to happen? Maybe. I told Sister Walls today, I said, hey, why don't you um, make some, um, uh, some taco stuff and we'll put it back in the bag. And she didn't ask this, but I said, don't call anybody. We're just going to throw some food in the bag. That's like Jesus. Jesus, he's coming back. <laughs> he's not going to say, he's not going to be calling people. I am coming back today. Hey, make sure you're at the church house at 630. Yes, 630. I will be back there. No. He's coming back. He could be back tonight. This is well as, you know, she got all the food together, put it together, we threw it back there, whatever this night. I said, the food is just for whoever shows up. That's how it was with Jesus. The brother came in, he said, <laughs> see, you never gonna use this word. He <laughs> said, Jesus said, um, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Right. You know I was gonna use you in this service. <laughs> his reward. What is his reward? I, I really don't know. We already have salvation. We're already going to heaven. What is the reward that Jesus has with him? Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. What is it? Well, preacher, you should be telling me. We'll find out. Maybe it could be uh, a crock pot full of uh, taco seasonings back there. You never know. <laughs> They'd seen this beggar man there at the gate for years. They knew that this was the man that was crippled from birth. How is it now that this man is walking. They're willing to listen to Peter for an explanation. Peter began to preach Jesus to these people. All you ever need is Jesus. When Peter saw the crowd, he started preaching. Acts chapter 3 and verse 12 says, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel at this? Or why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us? as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. Why look on us? Why look on me or, or anyone else like it's by uh, uh, my holiness or anything that I've done? But I want to take you back to what Peter said. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It's only through Jesus. It's only through Jesus Christ uh, that we're breathing in this place tonight. It's only through Jesus Christ uh, that we made it uh, all through the day when the, begin, the rain began to come down. And the leaves were rushing away from the street. It's only by the grace of God that uh, one of our tires. Did you know if one tire, one of your tires begin to hit a brown leaf, you begin to spin out. But Jesus washed that wash those leaves away today. Amen. It's only by the grace of God that we made it here safely tonight. Amen. It's only by the grace of God that we will leave here tonight Amen. safely. Amen. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it's not because of Pastor Walls. It's not because of New Testament Christian Church. It's not because of anything. It's because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth yes. Yes, sir. that keeps us of course, it takes some wisdom through, from the men of God, from our pastor, from uh, our leaders, and this. And it takes that. But we all have to have a personal relationship with the Lord. All of us. All of us. I always make that statement. I used to call my pastor and, um, and want to ask him a question. Sir, what, what about such such? The first thing he says, did you pray, brother? Did you take it to the Lord in prayer, brother? Uh, well, hello, hello. <laughs> Sometimes that's what people do all the time. Like, pastor, what did I do about this? Pastor, did you pray? Because my pastor was teaching me to get my own walk with the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants out of all of us. He wants all of us to have our own relationship, personal yes. relationship with him. <laughs> Man, preacher, how you doing all that? If Jesus can heal this man that was crippled from birth, he can handle any situation 
in our lives. Jesus took him from being a begging outcast to being a praising insider. God is through our present. And it'll give us hope for the future. Jesus is all we need. He's all we need. Yes, sir. To the lost, yes. he is the way. Yes. Put down here. To the dead, he is the life. If you've been lied to or lied on, he is the truth. I talked to a man yesterday, and uh, uh, all of his life he's been lied to. Been lied to. One man shared uh, how he, one man was sharing that the Bible wasn't real and he, he confounded the preachers and all the Christians they, because some preachers and Christians can, can begin to uh, uh, convey the Bible to the man. The man made them all look like fools. We said, well, why are you saying that, preacher? There was one thing that that man that made the preachers look like fools, one thing that he didn't do. He didn't live right. And the person that was looking at him that he was raising, remember that. He knew a lot about the Bible, but one thing that he didn't do, he didn't live right. He didn't live what he began to talk about to other people. And that had that young man confused all of his life. What I'm saying is, you're out there, and you know the truth. Live your life with Jesus to the fullest. Don't be fake. Hallelujah! Nobody want to be a fake, I don't want a fake Christian. You don't got to say hallelujah all the time. You don't got to say God, God bless you all the time. Be you! You know how people say, do you! Do Jesus! That's what you need to do. <laughs> do Jesus! Anyway. To the thirsty, he's the living water. To the astronomer, he is a bright and morning star. To the machinist, he's that wheel in the middle of the wheel. To the mechanic, he's the one that can fix all your needs. I was sharing that with an individual last night. Well, it, he was, someone was praying uh, uh, for something. And he said, the man kept on saying, oh, Jesus, fix it. Jesus, fix it. And as I prayed for that family last night during that Bible study, I used that phrase what that man said. I said, Jesus fixed the souls, fixed the souls that's in this living room tonight. Only Jesus can do that. Not Pastor Walls, Jesus. We always push people to Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He always begins to lift Jesus higher. Pushes men and women to Jesus. The Holy Ghost stands in the background and he begins to let men and women know that if Jesus is lifted higher, if Jesus begins to get higher, that he'll begin to draw all men unto him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about giving glory to the one, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's all about giving glory. As the brother began to say, it's always about worshiping the one. He said he would have those worship him in spirit and in truth. It's all about lifting up him higher and higher and higher. As we go lower and lower and lower, we got to lift Jesus up. We got to put Jesus in the forefront. It's not programs in the church. It's not everything of giving them and women this uh, but it's about giving men and women Jesus yes. Amen. presenting Jesus yes. allowing Jesus to be where he belongs in people's lives and that is the first and the foremost in their lives yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Jesus is the chief cornerstone he's the builder to the lonely he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother Reminded when I was a young man. When I was a young, when I was a young man, I was always lonely. Go ahead and say that. Always lonely. And I believe that I felt like that because at a young age I began to give my heart to Christ. You know, some people say, "Oh, you know, it didn't take." But you know something? It did take. As I look back on my life, I, I couldn't understand why I couldn't get, uh, couldn't, couldn't have fun with everybody else. I couldn't understand why I couldn't, I didn't like to do certain things that everybody else was doing. I couldn't understand that. 
But I believe without a shadow of a doubt that when I prayed and asked Christ into my heart at a young age, I may not have felt anything, but God began to work a miracle in my life. I may not have, I, and I thought that I can, uh, the things in my life, that something was wrong with me, but it wasn't anything wrong with me. And God was beginning, he wanted me to develop a relationship with him. And I thought that I needed to be just like everybody else. But Jesus was letting me know that he wanted me to be more like him. Yeah. And I had to come to that place where I surrendered my heart and life to Jesus. So I can be what he had created me to be. And that's what the Lord is doing in all of our lives. He wants, he's created all of us to be what he created. Not what we want to be. We may want to be some executive or some uh, entrepreneur and all these things, but Jesus wants us to be what he created us to be. You ever think about that? I think God, I don't know if he wants me to. You know what God wants you to be. Everybody does. But they want to be what they want to be. Maybe we can, you know, I, I had a car accident. I'm closing. I had a car accident one time long time ago when I was, right before I went to a seminary, I was sitting at this light and I looked in the mirror and it was a car. I saw this, I saw this, this young girl, she was um, messing with the radio. I said, she's going to hit me in the, back, in the back. And so she kept going closer and closer and she was going fast and fast and I began to brace myself because she was going <laughs> and I had this big old tank of a station wagon. Didn't even do anything about the station wagon. But it tore up the front of her car. So as I was sitting in the, uh, um, the front seat of this state trooper's car, the woman was in the back seat and um, the, the state trooper gave her a ticket. And he didn't give me a ticket, but he gave her a ticket for hitting me back on the rear end. And so as she, as he told her to leave the uh, vehicle, he told me, uh, young man, I need you to sit here for a little while. I got to talk to you. And I was like, whoa, man, I'm going to be arrested <laughs> for what I do. So he began to finish up his paperwork. He closed that little book he had with the tickets in there, and he took off this, this big hat, this round hat he had, and put it on the, on, the, on the dashboard. He said, what do you do for work? I said, sir, <laughs> I said, I was out looking for a job today. I didn't have a job at the time. I said, I was out looking for a job. He said, you know something? They're very common situations. I saw you handled yourself, you know, when, when this accident happened, you know, you were very calm, you know. Well, he said, well, here's my card. He said, go put an application in for be, to be a state trooper. He said, we need people like you on the force. And I was like, wow, oh, praise God, this is just an opportunity. And then we left. The Holy Ghost was like, how you going, you ain't called to be no trooper. I called you to preach. You know, now this is in my mind going, you know, Holy well, God, maybe I can be a, a chaplain in the state trooper's office. Maybe I could do something like that. No. He said, he called me to preach. Mm, that's good. So I'll never forget that day, that time where, where God differentiated um, being what I thought that I was going to be led to do that job than to be a preacher of the gospel. It's quiet out there. <laughs> so what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, what has the Lord called you to do? Yeah. What has he called you to do? He said, well, he called me to take care of my family, preacher. He called me to do this, called me to do that. But what has he really called you to do? Have you ever gotten a prayer meeting and asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? What have you called me to do? Ask him that. I guarantee you, he will answer. So I'll bow our heads tonight and close our eyes in reference to the Lord tonight. Jesus is all you need. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. And walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Tonight, 
The Lord is stretching forth his right hand to you tonight. He wants to lift you up. It's up to you to grasp hold of that hand. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your word that never goes out void. Speak gently to every soul that you've created here tonight. Help them, God, to know that you come quickly. Your reward is with you. Help them, God, to make their calling and election sure. Is this what the Lord truly wants me to do in this life? Or has he called me to leap as this man leaped? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up tonight and walk. Jesus is sharing that with you tonight. Let's all find a place to pray. Pray at the seat, pray at your altar. Wherever the Lord lays upon your heart tonight, spend a season of prayer with this one called Jesus. Allow him by his spirit.
Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world, for the world today. Above him. Let's all stand tonight. Let's slip up our hands and worship him tonight as we close the service in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight, God, for your spirit that has spoken to every one of our hearts tonight. Help us, Jesus, be led by your spirit, not by our own desires. God, I ask tonight, Lord, as we look at you, that perfect face of the law of liberty help us to make every decision count in light of eternity I ask this in Jesus Christ's holy name let this church say amen God bless you is our prayer tonight and pray for us pray for your church Amen. we'll see you here Saturday morning or Sunday morning God bless you